another episode of Caribbean Current, where the team sparks discussion on all things happening in the Caribbean community, especially around the areas of music, business, and events. So today, the entire team is here, and we have a topic that we think is very relevant in today's society, and that's about race relations in the U.S. and how it impacts us as Caribbean immigrants. So we wanted to have a discussion, talk about should we be more active in this revolution? What should Caribbean immigrants be doing? We have lots of questions. And everybody on the team, we have our different perspectives, different convictions, and we think it adds to a very balanced perspective on our overall participation in this revolution. So let's jump right in. My name is Marissa, founder of To Be Caribbean. I'm also a marketing consultant. And today we also have another team member, Jason, who is? Big up, Jason Skywalker there. Big up everybody who support the Caribbean, support to be Caribbean, and of course, Caribbean Connect. You know, so I'm a yard man, I'm a sound man, I'm a journalist, I'm an activist, and you know, it's a black power every single time. Old pirates, yes, they rob by. And we also have Nyla. <laughs> Jason. Yeah, we just had to keep it rolling. <laughs> just keep it rolling. I'm Nyla. I'm also from Jamaica, you know. Um, I would just say that I am an educator, I'm an activist, I'm a mother, you know, yes, that's me. I feel very outnumbered, but I'm going to hold my own, red, white, and black, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> and again, Marissa, let me say, I my mother's from Guyana, so I bring a multicultural perspective to the discussion, too. Yeah, yeah, balance, balance. <laughs> well, I'm Jamaican, my parents are Jamaican, my grandparents are Jamaican, my grandparents... And then there's the African before them, that's about it. All right, got it. <laughs> Just to be clear, you're Jamaican, got it. <laughs> Just to be clear. Right. <laughs> All right, so let's dive right in. So the overarching question is, should Caribbean immigrants be more involved in the revolution that's happening in the U.S. right now in terms of race relations? Nyla, what do you think? Absolutely. Um, we as Caribbean people, of course, we're going to look at it very differently. However, most of us are walking around here with the same skin color as the people who are being oppressed and the same people who are being disenfranchised in this country. And so, you know, I, I do feel like it affects us personally as well. Um, and, uh, you know, the, uh, when someone looks at you, they're not looking at you first as someone from Trinidad or Jamaica. They're seeing your skin color first. Mm -hmm. And they're reacting to your skin color. So we have to be, uh, yes, we have to be involved in this. You know, they, they said that, um, you know, we all kind of came over on a boat. We all just got dropped off at different places. Different locations, yep. Right. right. These are our brothers and sisters. You know, mm -hmm. we interact with them on a daily basis. All of us here, all of us live here in the United States. We, uh, I, have, I have children who interact, you know, who, who are living this life. So... I, I do feel like we do need to be involved. Absolutely. Okay, okay. Jason, what are your thoughts? The question it almost belies reality. Not only have we have always been involved in the fight against white supremacy and racism in this country, we have always been leaders. And I'm, throughout the history, and I'm, I'm going to give four instances, in the fight against um, the British armies in, in, um, in the War of Independence, it was the Africans in, from Jamaica and Haiti who came together, went to Georgia to fight British troops in the south so they could distract the, uh, the armies that were behind the Potomac so George Washington could win that battle. Um, it was the, the, the slave rebellions throughout the Caribbean, especially in Jamaica in 1834, that led the British Empire to abolish the slave trade, which changed the entire impetus of slavery in the world. Um, there was Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey movement is the largest black movement in the history of this country, which then inspired Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, because Malcolm X's father was a Garvey. Martin, uh, Martin Luther King's structure of, of, uh, of, of protest came from the Garvey movement. So we've always been leaders. The first black person run for president? Yeah, from Guyana. Yeah, Shirley Chisholm. So yeah, we've always been there. So it, the question is, is moot. We've already been there. We'd be, we'd be disrespecting our heritage if we weren't involved. Don't make no sense. Our existence as a culture is anti-slavery, is anti-race, is anti-oppression. Everything about us is about that. 
So not only should we be involved, we, we, we are able to be leaders in this whole conversation. Oh, yeah. Since the Trinidad is here, let me big up Stokely Carmichael, who Thank led you. the LCS <laughs> and Black Power as a term. Whatever. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. So that was powerful. And totally agree with both of you all. Um, so to your point, Nyla, like, you know, when racism happens, they don't distinguish between what country you're from. It's either you're Black or you're not. You know, so is, to your point, is, is a given that this fight is also ours. And Jason, I love the history that you gave. You know, it's powerful because, yeah, not just do we need to participate, but also we, we could lead. You know, that's, that's really strong. And two things came up to me, um, came up for me when you were talking, right? So my first was, does our younger generation understand the history that you're talking about, Jason? Like, do they understand the context and the role we have previously played? And why it's so important for us to still participate right now? And then the other thing that, that I think is important for us to touch on during this discussion is the how, right? So I think... To both of y'all's point, it's kind of mute. Yes, we have to participate in this. This is where we live. The question is, how do we participate? You know? So I don't know which one you want to address first. I guess, Nyla, because you're an educator, um, you're, any perspective on the millennials and the younger generation, like their perception of the history and their involvement with that part of it? Well, I can't speak for all young people. You know what I mean? I could just speak to the people I've interacted with, you know, I have a 17 year old and she is very um, aware of the history. She, she considers herself a historian yet uh, in downtown Atlanta the other day, she was out there protesting. She wasn't there at the, during the nighttime where it really did kick off, but she felt the obligation to get out there and, and let her voice be heard. So but I also know that there's also some young people who are not aware of the history. So, and they're just kind of going based off of emotion, you know, right. and going up and, and you know how we are, we were all young people at one point, you know, when you are young, you, you're very fearless. You don't care. You haven't lived life yet. You don't really have a lot of responsibilities. So you kind of just go, you just move, you know what I mean? But I do feel like, I, I do feel like the older generation and I kind of feel like we're kind of in the middle of the young and the old. Mm -hmm. We need to also listen to what these young people are saying. And I think it is the responsibility of the older ones to kind of add some perspective to the younger ones about, listen, this is the history. This is what we've tried. This is what has not worked. This is what we've tried. This is what has worked and, and try to have some understanding on both ends. You know, um, young people do have a say. They should have a say or they should be able to at least feel like they're a part of this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, remember, too, my 17-year-old went through the Obama era. So she was able to actually see a United States black president and what that represented for her. Very different from us who never really had that growing up. And then she had to go see Trump after that. So, you know, their perspective, <laughs> their perspective is, is obviously different from our perspective as the older generation. But, yeah, absolutely, they, they, the, the historical significance is important. And we, we just need to have some understanding of how they're seeing this and come to a consensus of how we're going to move. Yeah, I love that. Woo! And I think there was another question, but I can't remember what it was right now. But it was we'll the come how. Back to it, I'm sure. <laughs> About what? The how, how. How do we actually move? Oh, on? how. Well, I think I kind of answered that too. I think I said that, you know, the how is, um, I, you know, a lot of people, I hear a lot of older people talk about we should be organized. You know what I mean? That we need to be more organized. We need to be more organized. That's, that's easier said than done. Because with organization comes leadership, Right. So you need a leader to kind of bring people together to be organized. And I think it's not just about being organized. It's about finding those leaders who will make that happen. Uh, I, I see a lot of Black Lives Matter. You know, there was a, a time when Black, Black Lives Matter as an organized group was in your face. You saw them all over social media, all over the, uh, just all over the news, everything. And then they kind of, you know, you didn't really see them too much anymore. And now with the current chain of events, you see them again. Okay. 
that is one example of an organized movement. Now, people have their feelings about should you join that, should you not, should uh, the how that's a tricky one, Marissa. Um, but I think it's definitely based in leadership and organization. Right. I, I love that. And Jason, if I if you don't mind, if I could just respond to that real quick before we punt it to you. But like I just wanted to say in terms of the leadership piece of it. That was something I really noticed with the protest in Atlanta, right? Like the news reporters kept saying, you know, they can't find this one leader who is organizing everything. And to me, it actually was a good thing, you know, because sometimes when you have a leader, you also create a target, right? And we've seen that with black leadership throughout the years. So I'm like, yes. maybe it's a good thing they don't know who's leading this, you know what I mean? So right. that was something I took away um, from what was happening. But anyway, Jason. What are your thoughts in terms of young, the involvement of the younger generation and then the how piece of it? So I, th I think I need to have full disclosure if we're going to have a discussion. I actually do work with um, Black Lives Matter groups. I've been working with them before they were ever called Black Lives Matter. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people listening here probably remember the name Troy Davis. I began working with them on the, on the Troy Davis campaign, which was a innocent black man that was put on death row for the killing of a, of, of a police officer. And we were unsuccessful in stopping that execution. Anyway, here's the point. Um, you are correct. Um, you are correct, Marissa, that there is, that, that was a strategic point to make sure that there were no obvious leaders. Because if there are obvious leaders, there is a target. Like all of our movements historically, the obvious leader was taken out, either taken out by violence or taken out by compromise, whatever it is. And then no longer did the movement have any fuel. Um, so the how, um, if I guess I could use my, my history um, as, as, a, as a thing. My, you know, I'm educating, up, educating your children about history, in my opinion, is integral in making somebody who will be concerned about society and want to do things to make a difference. Because the reason, the reason why I am, why I'm even involved, is because I both, both when I went to school and I had a grandfather who kept on putting images in front of me about our African struggle all the way from Africa till we're in the Caribbean and so on, and, and the Taino struggle and so on. So by the time I came to the United States in my 20s, I immediately want to get involved and I sought out who was standing up against any kind of oppression and to be a part of it. The first campaign I was involved with was to remove the Confederate flag out of the Georgia flag. And I'll never forget the day of our main action, which we got students from Spelman Clark, University of Georgia, Georgia State, like we got students from all over the, um, Georgia to march on the Capitol. There were death threats from the Ku Klux Klan and everything on us. The governor called us, say, yo, you do know that we know people are coming to shoot you. So it takes both bravery, it takes both the desire, which comes from understanding the history, and it takes a little work yourself. Like, I'm quite sure now that your daughter put the work in to find out how to be involved with protests against what is happening right now. And once the danger comes, to be both smart and a degree fearless. If you understand the history, you understand being fearless. So that's the whole, in my opinion. Um, okay. So I also want to say too that um, you know, to the point of have, having a leader, I think it's that's a tricky one because you don't want to have a very um, a leader that everybody knows about. But I do think it's important that for us as black people, especially these young people, that they know that there is someone around who is, who is organizing and, and, and um, getting things going, right? The, the media don't need to know that there's a leader, in my opinion. You know, the, 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 the general public don't need to know. But they're, they're, yes, I do believe that the, there has to be someone there that a young person, not my daughter, but somebody who might not have a leader like in your mother or whatever, to look to, to get us to, to organizing and get us to where we need to go. 
right. you know, that, that protest in, in Atlanta had to have someone who organized it for it to even happen, right? Mm -hmm. How did people know to even go down there? So, so the way um, BLM, so the way BLM is set up, everybody knows who, everybody within BLM, who the organizers are. Everybody knows who the leaders are. And everybody's, right. to, we, everybody gets instructions. This is where you need to go. This is what you need to do. This is what you're doing. That's what you're in charge of. And everybody knows who, who, who is in your relative area. So to your point, that's a fact. But nobody outside, well, I'm quite sure a couple of people outside, but in general, definitely the media doesn't know who those persons are. Right. You know, unfortunately, somebody like Sean King, his name got out because he was there from the beginning before anybody even had an organized perspective. So he gets attacked consistently. Um, and his family and his children and so on. But throughout, though, there's really nobody else that gets that kind of visceral attack. Um, one thing I do want to say from what you are saying earlier, the, the, the friction between older and younger is a very interesting friction because the, I think the energy and the emotion that the youth bring is needed and the knowledge and the strategy of the older age is also needed. And throughout history, both have... Both have been very effective against these things that create structures of oppression and white supremacy. So, both sides, both entities exist in a very powerful way in that fight. Okay. Very, very, very powerful point. I guess I'll just add my perspective quickly before Zoom kicks us off. Um, and I just wanted to touch, Jason, on what you were saying, you know, because it's something that we debate about a lot in terms of how and the fact that you actively sought out organizations that were relevant to the cause, right? And I do see that as a key in terms of, of the getting active participation from the community, right? Like you have to be proactive and seeking out information. However, what I have seen in the community is until things reached a boiling point, like not a lot of people are proactively seeking out anything because yes. other realities, you know, like a lot of people are struggling financially or whatever the issues are but looking for a cause is not their priority. So I just want to say like, you know, we, we, the general message and the how is that first of all, I see you Jason, first of all is understanding that it starts with us, right? So we have to know like without our active participation, this revolution doesn't happen, right? So that's definitely something important. And then the other thing that I just wanted to add in addition to what y'all was saying is that um, we make room for everybody's input. And when I say that, I mean, each one of us has different skill sets that we could bring to this revolution. And, you know, as Caribbean immigrants, we might have different thought processes. You know, the diversity of thought helps to make things better. Um, but there's room for all of us to have an active role in this revolution. And, you know, I think we, we just need to find our lane, right? So there are some people who are on the ground and they're like, they end the protest and that's their space. That's great. Then you have the more strategic people who are, let's say, in corporate or whatever their role is. All right, they, they add the strategic input. That's great, right? And then we have people like you, Nyla, who are educators, who are molding the young minds, who have direct input from the youth. And you hear what they think and how they're feeling. And you could communicate that up to us who don't really understand, right? So everybody has a role. And I think it's important that we all have a respect for the different things that each one brings, and we, we work as a unit in terms of improving race relations, you know, because clearly Babylon is burning right now, so things have to change, you know? So that was just my only input. I think, Jason, you had one point, and then we could just wrap it up. I just want to make the point real quick. Unfortunately, historically, and I don't know if this will change, and it's not just the U.S., this is the world, but the... The civil rights movement doesn't become a national conversation until the mother of Emmett Till decides to put his bludgeoned, assaulted body on the front of newspapers all over the United States. Um, you know, the, the, voters act, the Voters' Right Act does not get signed until four little girls get blown up in a Birmingham church and the watch riots in response to King's killing happen. So it's unfortunately a part of human history that the majority doesn't respond until they got shot. I would love for that to be a change, but I'm just saying it, it is, that's what's been. Right, solid point, solid point. And I think we could end it with that because that's real, right? We don't have to wait until things are boiling over. You know, it, we could be proactive in this movement. 
So that was Caribbean Current. Um, the entire team was here. We're talking through, we're sparking discussion about, we started it with, should Caribbean immigrants be part of the revolution that's happening in the U.S.? And then we evolved the conversation into the input of our young, young people, specifically with having a historical context of how Caribbean leaders have been participating in the revolution. And then we spoke a little bit about the how. How do immigrants get involved in this revolution and how do we push things forward? So we want to hear from you. We shared our thoughts. We want to hear what you have to say. Um, and you know, I just want to end it with, at the end of the day, we all have to participate because there's no discrimination about where you're from you know, when it comes to this revolution. So I think we all have to participate. And the takeaway I just want to leave with everybody is find your lane. Whatever your lane is in this revolution, you have something that you could add. So please do. So with that, we're signing off. This was Nyla, right. Jay, and Marissa with Caribbean Current from To Be Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. Big up, big up, big up.